See, now I'm gonna have to slouch, and I don't wanna do that. I'm trying to fix my posture. All right, let's see. Nah, hold on. Nope. This ain't right, this ain't right. What's up everybody, it's your boy J-Rod. So today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you my Spanish journey, how I was able to learn Spanish. Um, I feel like, I'm, I'm pretty sure I did this video a long time ago on my channel, so um, some people might already know the story, but I'm, I'm gonna just give you the rundown on how I learned Spanish, and like I said, I know I've explained some of this before on my channel previously, but um, there are some new things to be added. So um, yeah, I'm just gonna stop talking and get straight into the video. All right, so it all started back in high school when they told me I either had to take French or Spanish in order to graduate. Y'all, I did not have any desire to learn a foreign language. I really did not. It was a requirement in order to graduate. I think I ended up just picking Spanish because it's like I live in America and I don't really see when I would be using French, but Spanish, there's tons of Spanish speakers everywhere, so I felt like Spanish would be a little bit more relevant. So I ended up going with Spanish. All right, so I ended up taking Spanish. Did not like Spanish class. Did not care to take Spanish class. I thought it was pointless. I thought it was stupid. I remember being in class saying like, bro, why do I have to take this language? Like I'm not living in Mexico, which is so ironic because fast forward, I actually ended up living in a Spanish speaking country, two Spanish speaking countries. But um, at that time, I just really did not understand the need to have to learn a foreign language. To me, that concept did not make any sense. So anyways, we get our first Spanish test and I think I made like a 35 on it or something. I didn't study for it. Like I told you, I did not care. But the funny thing is, I was actually a straight A student in school. So the teacher, she um, knew that I was a straight A student because she could see my grades in other classes. And so um, school has never been an issue for me. Like I've always been really good at school. But um, she knew that I was kind of BS, and so at the end of class, she pulled me to the side. She was like, "She's like, I want you to go home. I want you to study. I want you to retake this test tomorrow and take my class seriously." I'm like, "All right, bet." So go home, restudy for the test, make a hundred the next day, pass it with flying colors. Like I told you, it was easy. I just did not care about Spanish class. So all right, so as time progresses, I start to get the hang of Spanish, and um, by my junior year, I started to get this weird feeling. I was like. Man, like, I kind of like Spanish. And I remember being in denial about it because I remember I hated Spanish so much in the beginning. So when I started to feel like I like Spanish, I'm not gonna lie, I was a little bit disgusted with myself. I was, I was like, nah, like, this is weird. Like, you know, like, I hated Spanish, you know? And, um, but no, by my junior year, I actually started to kind of like it. And um, I was really good at it. You know, I started to get really good at it in class. And um, I noticed that I wasn't having to study as hard as the other kids. A lot of the other kids were studying super, super hard, but you know, so everything was just coming to me very natural and it was just easy for me so I think that's why I ended up starting to like it and then by senior year I was kicking ass in Spanish I was at the top of my class okay people started to pay me to do their Spanish homework like I remember people in the class it was like yo j Rock, can you please do my Spanish homework like I'll pay you so people was paying me to do Spanish homework everybody was copying off my paper like everybody wanted to be friends with me in Spanish class you know I ain't gonna lie I was kind of feeling myself at that time because like I was at the top of my class and then I ended up getting an award for the highest Spanish average so like when we graduated high school they gave me like an award for being at the top of my class in Spanish and like I said just looking back at it I just remember like starting Spanish and how much I hated it and then to come out at the top of my class you know by the time I graduated like that was kind of amazing to me so you know it felt pretty good so then after I graduated high school I went to Mexico because I was like now I actually get to put you know the real Spanish in action and go like talk to the actual locals all right so I get out to Mexico for the first time like I'm pumped I'm excited I'm like yeah like I'm about to go over there and speak to the natives you know like I'm kind of I ain't gonna lie like I was feeling a little bit cocky a little bit I was like, all right, like I'm about to go out to Mexico and you know speak to the native speakers nah nah <laughs> that is not what happened. I get to Mexico and I quickly realized how terrible my Spanish was. Not only could I not hold a conversation, but I realized that my Spanish was only limited to what I learned in the classroom. And if you really think about it, it kind of makes sense because you know, we wasn't really speaking Spanish in Spanish class. We were just like listening to the teacher talk and we did worksheets. So, you know, I didn't really know how to speak Spanish. So that just goes to show you like, even if you make a hundred on a test, that does not mean nothing to the real world. And on top of that, they didn't even speak like how they taught in the class. Like, you know, in the classroom is like formal Spanish and over there is like, you know, how the natives speak. So that was another issue for why I could not hold a conversation. It was kind of like, Hola, como estas bien y tú? Like after that point, you know, it was just like crickets. Like I didn't really know what to say. So yeah, I was quickly humbled when it happened and I realized that I was not as good at Spanish as I thought I was. I could make hundreds all day on tests, but when it came down to the real thing and talking to the actual locals, 
my Spanish was non-existent. So because that happened, it actually made me want to learn the language. I was like, I know I'm capable of learning this, you know? So I came back to the States and I decided that I was going to actually take Spanish seriously and actually try to learn the language. Like, I was like, I'm going to push myself to learn this because, you know, like I know I'm capable of learning the language, but that was just kind of like a wake up call to me that I actually got some more work to do. So I ended up hitting up my mom's best friend who happens to be a Spanish teacher. She's a high school Spanish teacher and she's black. So, you know, so, you know, she had to learn Spanish. So I messaged her and I said, hey, like, you know, I'm trying to learn Spanish fluently. You got any tips or pointers? And so she told me to start off with like movies and TV shows. She was like, just start off with like children's movies and TV shows and um, just start watching TV. And believe it or not, TV is how I learned about 80% of my Spanish. I would say a good 75 to 80% of my Spanish came from watching television. So that's exactly what I did. Went on Netflix, started watching tons of kids TV shows, downloaded every single Spanish app, Duolingo, Pimsleur. I started listening to music. I was listening to reggaeton, Daddy Yankee. Like my whole life just became immersed in Spanish. So it was like, wake up, Spanish. Go to school, Spanish. Eat, Spanish. Sleep, Spanish. Like everything was Spanish. So I ended up giving myself a full direct immersion. So fast forward, I get to college and I went to like this really prestigious elite college with like kids. It was like an international school. So it was like kids from around the world. And um, I ended up starting to hang out with a bunch of Latinos. So predominantly um, Colombian and Venezuelans to be specific. Those are the ones that I was like hanging out with. But it was kids from every single country around the world. It was kids from Panama, it was kids from Mexico, it was kids from um, Ecuador. It was kids from around the world because like I told you, I went to this elite international school. You know, when I hung out with them, that's all they would do was speak Spanish. But there was one problem, okay? Um, I would hang out with them and I was learning Spanish and I would listen to them talk amongst each other. But when it came to talking to me, they did not want to speak Spanish with me. And it kind of used to piss me off a little bit because it's like I wanted to practice my Spanish, but it just seemed that either A, they didn't feel like I was good enough or worthy enough to like practice with, or B, they didn't feel like speaking Spanish with me because they're in America and they want to practice their English. So um, I was getting very, 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 very frustrated because like we would speak Spanish a little bit and then they'll just jump to English with me. But, but amongst their friends, you know, they'll speak Spanish all day. So I would be listening to them and I imitate them and I'll learn slang. And like, I was actually picking up a lot of Spanish just hanging out with them, but I didn't really feel like I was practicing speaking enough. You know, I was just like practicing my comprehension. So I had to figure out another way that I was gonna actually be able to physically speak and practice because that's what I wanted the most. I think my comprehension was really good at that time, but I wanted to actually talk and speak Spanish and have conversations with people. So then I ended up finding this place called Plaza Fiesta. So if you live in Atlanta, um, if you go to DeKalb County on Buford Highway, there's this place called Plaza Fiesta and it's basically this Mexican mall, right? So if, I mean, if you walk into this mall, it literally looks like Mexico. I'm not even joking. All the stores are in Spanish. All the, all the workers speak Spanish. Like nobody speaks English, you know? So it, I mean, it, like when you walk through, it really feels like you're in Mexico. I used to go there every day after school just to like go up there just to practice my Spanish. And I was going up there so much that I actually ended up becoming friends with the workers. So, um, so like I had like different workers for each different store. So like I had the cell phone lady, she will give me like the hookup on the cell phone cases. Um, I think she was from Venezuela. And then like I had the shoe lady, she will be giving me a discount on the shoes. And then the ice cream person, like, you know, I just became friends with so many people because they knew that I came up there and I wanted to talk Spanish. But the best part was they did not speak English. And that is like one of my biggest tips for people who are wanting to learn Spanish is you gotta find people that can't speak English. So there was no like, let me jump to English. I feel like his Spanish ain't good enough. No, these people only spoke Spanish. And that was like, I used that to my advantage because you know, like they had no choice but to speak Spanish. So by going to Plaza Fiesta every day and hanging out with the workers and practicing my Spanish with them, that's actually what helped me become conversationally fluent. So um, over time, like I actually was able to start holding conversations with um, natives and I wasn't having like that I guess that fear or that struggle that I was having when I first went to Mexico so me being this black guy the only black guy hanging out at this plaza because it was no black people I think the only other black guy was a janitor that worked there okay but I was like the only black person in this mall and you know people was looking at me like you know is this dude lost but no, nah, like I really came up there determined to learn Spanish and that's like how I did it I just started talking to people um, in Spanish up there I became friends with a lot of people up there so um, anyways, I still 
was not at a level that I wanted to be. At this point, I'm conversationally fluent, but I, I still wanted more. I still want to get to the next level. Like I wasn't satisfied yet. And so um, I knew that in order to take my Spanish to the next level, I was going to have to go direct immersion because that is the number one way to learn Spanish is to go to a Spanish speaking country and live in a Spanish speaking country and actually immerse yourself in that environment where you're forced to speak it. But anyway, so there was this YouTuber at the time named Amy Gonzalez. I actually did an interview with her on my channel, so I'll leave a link to the video right here. But um, my favorite all time YouTuber, okay, I was I looked up to this lady because she spoke like six languages. She was traveling, she's like a flight attendant. So, you know, like she's been all around the world and I just was really into like her videos. You know, I was watching her back in high school. So she came to Atlanta for a meet and greet and I was excited to meet her. And then there was another YouTuber that um, came, her name was Nibby Speaks. Some people know she is too, but um, she was living in Dominican Republic at the time. And I had watched a couple of her videos too. So me and Nibby got to talking and um, Nibby was just sharing with me. She was like, you know, one of the ways I learned Spanish is from living in Spanish speaking countries, you know, just direct immersion. So we got to talking about Dominican Republic and um, I think somebody at the meet and greet was Dominican. So we ended up going to like a Dominican restaurant and then uh, we went to a Dominican club that night. So, you know, that's how I was introduced to Dominican Republic. And um, after talking to Nibby, she kind of convinced me that it would be a good idea to like go live in Dominican Republic to learn Spanish. So that's exactly what I did. So I hit up Nibby and I said, hey, do you think I could um, stay in Dominican Republic with you, you know, like as I learn Spanish? And she was like, yeah. So uh, she was cool with it. I thought she was going to say no at first, but she was real like just down with it. So um, I ended up booking the tickets. I flew out to the Dominican Republic. But funny thing was, she actually wasn't down there when I first got there because she was in the state. She just had a baby. Like, it was something crazy happened with her house, like it burned down or whatever. So um, she was in the States, like taking care of business. But anyways, her husband was there in Dominican Republic. So I actually ended up living with her husband. And um, it was this Haitian guy. He speaks Spanish and Creole. So he does not speak English. So um, as you can imagine, this was going to be a very interesting, you know, type of situation. All right, so I fly out to Dominican Republic, you know, like I feel good with my Spanish, you know, because I've been practicing, practicing, practicing. But man, when I got to Dominican Republic, I felt like I went right back into the same cycle again, just like when I was in Mexico. I just felt like I was starting back from square one. I could not understand anything. The people were speaking way too fast. I never heard Spanish like this ever in my life. Like the way that they, these people spoke, it was like they cut all the words and it was just so much slang. And I was like, bro, like this is not Spanish. Like, you know, like I've been practicing Spanish and I just felt like I went right back to the beginning, like how I felt in Mexico. I was like, bro, like I don't understand these people. Like Dominicans speak so freaking fast. I'm like, just take a breath, bro. Like, damn. It was like something I've never heard before. Like I never heard people speak Spanish like this. So yeah, I just felt helpless again. And then on top of that, I'm living with somebody who doesn't speak English. So um, like I told you, he's um, Haitian, but he also speaks Spanish. So Spanish is his second language. And, you know, I'm from America, English is my first language. So we were both using our second language to communicate to each other in Spanish. And his Spanish was like fluent. You know, he had been living in Dominican Republic for a long time, but the problem is he had a Haitian accent. So the best way for me to describe this is Imagine a Chinese person speaking English with like a very thick accent. That's kind of like the equivalent to this guy speaking Spanish. Like he was a Haitian guy, so he had a very, very thick Haitian accent. So I'm over here trying to understand his Spanish. And then on top of that, I'm still trying to understand how Dominicans talk. So like, it was just a really like crazy experience. So, you know, through time, you know, just being in Dominican Republic and meeting friends. And once again, talking to people who do not speak English, that actually helped me. And um, I actually started to get good. Like, you know, like just, you know, practicing every day, going out to clubs, going out to parties, going to the beaches. You know, like I actually started to pick up the Spanish and um, I guess like the rhythm of how the people spoke in Dominican Republic. And then on top of that, I was living in a neighborhood with no Americans. So, you know, I had no choice but to speak Spanish. So, you know, every time we would go out to the clubs, go out to parties or whatever, it would just be Spanish, 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 Spanish all day. And then the um, Haitian guy that I was living with, all we spoke in was Spanish every day. So um, it was not easy in the beginning. Like, I'm not gonna lie, I had moments where I kind of just wanted to quit and just be like, you know, forget Spanish. But um, not realizing that by me speaking with them that it was actually gonna help me in the future be able to understand other accents because if you can understand a Dominican, then you can pretty much understand anybody. So, you know, it was actually a good thing that I chose to stay in Dominican Republic to learn Spanish, opposed to going somewhere else because 
now I feel like I can understand any Spanish speaker. So, you know, and that actually ends up happening. So your boy goes to Spain. I end up getting a job in Spain to um, teach English. And um, I was living with this family. I did make a story time video about my crazy experience in Spain because um, let's just say it did not end well, but it was worth the experience. You know, I definitely do think I benefited from it as well, but um, it was a crazy, crazy, crazy story. So if you want to listen to that story, I'm going to leave the link to the video right there. Whereas I was living in Spain with like this very, very rich, multi-million dollar family in like this big mansion. Yeah, it was pretty cool. I did end up quitting that job because it just ended up on bad terms. Um, so I came back to the Dominican Republic to continue my Spanish. So I'll definitely say the combination of me staying in Dominican Republic in Spain brought me to fluency. Like I felt like it took me to the next level. Like this next level that I keep talking about. All right, so fast forward over the next several years, I ended up spending a lot of time traveling to the Dominican Republic. And there's just something about that country that, you know, it just had me hooked. So, so you know, just spending so much time in that country, you know, it, it was helping improve my Spanish even more and then finally I get to graduation so I end up graduating college we in the middle of a pandemic and the whole world shuts down all right so anyways everybody's quitting their jobs no healthcare workers like all the healthcare workers are quitting their jobs or whatever and so you know it's just like this big loss in the healthcare scene because everybody was afraid of COVID but anyways there was a job posting for this hospital thing and it was like bilingual speakers needed like it said needed okay because like i told you everybody had just ran away because of this whole pandemic um i applied for it did not really think my spanish was um good enough at the time like i was i was a little bit insecure about it and still to this day like i still feel insecure about my spanish like even to this day when i'm like talking amongst like native people sometimes i'm a little bit self-conscious of the way that i sound because you know i have an accent which is normal for a lot of people so i did apply for this job so i did two interviews and then i ended up having to do a spanish test they told me that i was gonna have to take a oral proficiency exam and i told them i never done something like that before for a spanish speaking job usually if i'm doing a bilingual job it's just like you tell the person in the interview you like yes you speak spanish y'all probably have like an interview in spanish and then boom it's like you get the job but she told me that i was going to be doing an oral proficiency exam so i was like damn i'm gonna have to study for this and so she ended up giving me all this information and i had like a week to study for it so um i ended up studying and it was like five levels to the test so i ended up passing the test and i ended up getting a job so you know working a job where you're like surrounded by so many native spanish speakers um like i'm not gonna lie i was a little bit intimidated at first because uh, I just felt like they was gonna judge my Spanish or feel like it wasn't good enough. But um, luckily, like everybody was really supportive and everybody helped me. Like if it was something I didn't know, you know, like they'll be willing to help me. And, and most of the people was amazed at the fact that like I wasn't a native speaker and I had to teach myself. I think a lot of them just admired the fact that I was actually trying and um, I was actually able to put my you know, skills to use to like help out the community. So, you know, if anything, I think people are more excited at the fact that I was even able to get the job as being just like a native English speaker. So, you know, just working amongst a lot of Spanish speakers and then working with the Spanish speaking patients, um, that's just like really good practice. Um, that actually did push my Spanish even more. But yeah, that's pretty much how I learned Spanish. I still want more from it. Like, I don't think you're ever gonna just stop learning Spanish. I think that's a misconception that people have about um, studying languages is that it just ends like no it's a constant thing like you're never gonna just stop learning but yeah i still want to learn more i still want to get better and um it's just gonna be an ongoing thing probably for the rest of my life but i'm just gonna continue to learn spanish but yeah that is my spanish journey that is how i became fluent in spanish um don't knock things until you try it that just goes to show you coming from somebody who absolutely hated this language to live in a Spanish-speaking country, to getting a job now where I'm speaking Spanish every day. Like, it's just amazing what you can do, like, when you actually give yourself the opportunity to do things. But yeah, you already know what to do. Don't forget to like and subscribe and catch me on the next video. All right, peace.